Okay, so today we're going to be working on a C Sharp progress bar tutorial. Now this is both basic and advanced because I'm going to be teaching you two different ways to do this. For the most part, as long as you pay attention and kind of go along with the flow of the video, you shouldn't get lost. Um, I'll try to explain everything that I type. Most of it's pretty straightforward, um, but I will explain it for you beginners. Now, uh, open up Microsoft Visual Studio or C Sharp Express Edition. Uh, 2008 or 2010 I think is the latest edition now um, which you can download from Microsoft.com and for DreamSpark people you can download a free copy of Microsoft Visual Studio I believe you just have to have uh, st uh, student credentials like you're going to college or something like that uh, so that you can prove that you're gonna use it for a good cause and not a legal cause of course now basically back on the project you're gonna want to create a new project go to visual C sharp right here and then go to Windows form application now you can call this whatever you want I'm gonna name this C sharp tutorial one I'm gonna hit OK it's gonna create it now um, what I normally do is I increase the width just a little bit and I decrease the height okay you don't have to do that, but that's my, uh, that, that's what I prefer. Now, what you're going to want to do is open up the toolbox, and you're going to want to go up here to button and double click it. Then you're going to want to drag it down to the bottom, and you're going to want to open up the toolbox again, and come down here to progress bar, and double click it. And then you're just going to want to set this up to how you would, how you think it looks best. I can't tell you how it's going to look best, so just kind of set it up that way. And then once it is set up, it's mine is set up. Uh, I will show you, you can change the text on the button by coming over here to the properties panel. And notice how it says text over here? Just delete it and hit and type something like start progress bar. And then expand it just a little bit so that it shows all the text. And we're going to double click on the button. And then what we're going to want to do is progress bar dot minimum, minimum equals zero semicolon enter. And then you're going to want to type progress bar one dot maximum equals 100. Now basically the minimum and the maximum. The minimum is the least amount that a progress bar can hit now we don't want it zero is uh, zero you, you're not gonna have a negative 20 per, on the progress bar it's not even gonna show so there's no point always make your minimum zero now the maximum is how far it's gonna it's gonna need to go until it hits the end of the progress bar now in this case it's gonna have to go a hundred uh, whatever whatever it runs on a hundred little uh, progress markers there's really no specific name for it now what you're going to want to do is progress bar dot step equals one semicolon and then enter progress bar dot perform step open parentheses close parentheses semicolon now basically what the step is is it tells it about how many times or tells it every time on every time you click the button it's going to perform one step now it needs to perform a hundred steps to reach the end which means you're gonna have to click the button a hundred times that is a lot I know and then progress bar one dot perform step basically tells the computer to run this little script that we've written so we're gonna hit debug and come up here notice how I click it and I keep, if I keep clicking it it uh, advances along the progress bar. Well, man, that sure is taking a long time, isn't it? I, I wouldn't want to sit there. Now, which come down here and go to the step and change this to 10. And then we're going to hit debug again. And we're going to hit it. And look, it's adding 4 each time instead of just 1. That so makes it go by a lot faster. Now, this is a rather basic method. Um, Really, the only uses I could think of is for like a form, and you want to show a person about how far they're they've gotten through it so far. Uh, I mean, that's a very good use. You create a form, 
they start at the beginning, and each time, say, you have 10 parts to the form, well, it adds 10 uh, steps to it. Or, it goes 10 steps each time, every time you click the next part of the form. So, I mean, that very well could be a great use for it. Now, the second way is by adding a timer to it. And basically, every interval, every tick or interval, it's going to pro uh, progress the progress bar. So, what we're going to do is open up the toolbar, toolbox, and come down here to the timer button, or timer object. And we're going to double click it. We're going to left click on it. We're going to come over here to the properties menu. Now basically an interval is every time it makes a tick basically. And there are 1000 milliseconds in a second. So right now it is doing one tenth of, ten, one -tenth of a second is every tick. Well I want to change it to 1000 so that it's every second. Now enabled basically means the timer is going to be off until you start it. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to come over here to the button and we're going to make sure we're in it and we're going to highlight all this and delete it. We don't need it anymore for right now. And we're going to type timer one dot enabled equals true semicolon. And we're going to come back to the form one dot cs design and we're going to want to double click on timer one. Now this code is going to look very uh, familiar because it is. It's almost like it is the exact same code. We're going to type progress bar one dot minimum equals zero semicolon and we're going to type progress bar one dot maximum equals 100 semicolon enter. Basically minimum is the least and maximum is the highest. Progress bar one dot step open pro oh, sorry step equals one semicolon enter and then progress bar one dot dot perf dot perform step open parentheses close parentheses semicolon basically a step is each tick well in this case each tick it hits it's gonna create a step so every second it's gonna add a step okay makes sense Every button click for the pa for the other one, it uh, created a step. Well, for this time, every second it's going to create a step. So it's basically going to take uh, it's going to take 100 seconds for this to completely fill up. So let's come up here to start debugging, and we're going to debug it. Then if we click on the start progress bar button, every second it's adding one to it. So it looks like it's working. Well, that's a little slow for my liking. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to change it to 5. We're going to hit start debugging. I'm going to hit the start progress bar button. And it adds 2 every time. That's pretty good speed. Now, this could be used for doing a timer. Um, it could be used... Oh, a good example is say you're, you play a game and it runs basically off a clock system. Well, and you need to let your stamina or something re uh, regenerate. You could basically create a script where every it, it calculates um, how much stamina you have. It asks you for the input of how much stamina you have, and then it makes a progress bar with a timer. And basically, every tick is how long it takes for that uh, stamina to regenerate. And then it basically it'll tell you when it's done with a little message. So, you know, that's some that's a good use for the timer and the progress bar. Uh, good uses for the button, um, form, where you have multiple parts and you want to show a person what part they're on. Um, thanks for listening. Uh, rate, comment, subscribe. Um, I'm open for questions. The next one, I'll probably end up showing how to make a text box and probably how to enter string input values. Um... Eventually, we'll get to about um, probably the fifth C sharp tutorial, and I'm gonna kind of put them all together into one large form, and uh, show you guys what a major form can do. So uh, thanks, rate, comment, subscribe, um, all the hoo ha. Thanks.